Welcome, I'm Sonia and today we're taking a look at my favorite TBR. Grab a drink, sit back and enjoy. This is going to take a while. I'm participating in several year-long challenges. To start off, let's go with Buzz Wordaton. This was created by Kayla from Books and Nala. The announcement can be found below. I will link it in the description box. The theme is positive words. This is a very broad and yet so hard topic to pinpoint, but I did find some that I want to get to for another challenge. So I'm doubling them up, so it's convenient. The Good Life, Lessons from the World's Largest Scientific Study of Happiness by Robert Waldinger and Mark Schulz. This is a non-fiction book nominated to the 2023 Goodreads Choice Award. In their book, the directors of the Harvard Study of Adult Development showed that the answer to these questions might be closer than we realize. This is a personal development slash self-help type book but I'm hoping that it, it has a good portion of behavioral science to accompany it. I will read it and decide if I want to have my own copy to annotate afterwards. Another one that I want to cross off my Goodreads Choice Award list is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. This is a mystery thriller. It's about a Korean American family in Virginia whose lives are thrown upside down after the father goes missing. One regular day, becomes relevant when Eugene, the youngest son, who has a rare genetic condition, Angelman syndrome, and cannot speak, and the father don't return from a walk in a nearby park. The panic doesn't rain until the boy turns up at the front door, bloody and alone. Keeping the same pattern, we have Happy Place by Emily Henry. This is the winner for Best Romance of 2023. We have Harriet and Gwen, who have been the perfect couple since they met in college, until now. They broke up six months ago, but haven't told their best friends yet, and they decide not to ruin their friend's getaway. The group takes a vacation together and have been doing so for a decade. Harriet and Wynne are lying through their teeth while trying not to notice how desperately they want each other. Because the cottage is for sale and this is the last week they'll have together in this place. They can stand to break their friend's heart and so they'll play their part. I am predicting this can possibly be my favorite romance novel of the year, and what's more fitting than reading it in Valentine's Day week, right? Next, we have I'm Glad My Mom Died by Janet McCurdy, a heartbreaking, hilarious memoir by iCarly star Janet McCurdy about her struggles as a former child actor. It does include eating disorders, addiction, and a complicated relationship with her overbearing mother, and how she retook control of her life. The other challenge from the Goodreads group a year or two. This takes place from the 5th to the 11th, and the theme is Black History and Diverse Reads. We'll start with Crowned, Magical Folk and Fairy Tales from the Diaspora by Kara and Regis Bettencourt. Filled with visual magic and storytelling wonder, these stories reimagine our favorite and more beloved childhood fairy tales and folk tales to encourage creativity, empower imagination, and foster self-esteem. Revisit beloved classics, but with a twist, such as The Little Mermaid, Sleeping Beauty, Hansel and Gretel, Red Riding Hood, The Poison Apple, and others. The Water Dancer by Ta Nehisi Coates. John Hiram Walker was born into bondage. When his mother was sold away, Hiram was robbed of all memory of her, but was gifted with a mysterious power. Years later, when Hiram almost drowns in a river, the same power saves his life. This brush with death births an urgency in Hiram and a daring scheme to escape from the only home he's ever known. Next, we have 400 Souls, a community history of African America from 1619 to 2019 by Ivram K. Candy. In 80 chronological chapters, the book charts the tragic and triumphant 400-year history of Black American experience in a choral work of exceptional power and beauty. Shane Gang All Stars by Nana Kuwami Ajay Brenja. A nominee for Best Science Fiction and Debut Novel in 2023, Goodreads Choice Awards. Two top women gladiators fight for their freedom within a depraved private prison system. Loretta and Hamura are the stars of Chain Gang All Stars, the cornerstone of CAPI, or Criminal Action Penal Entertainment, a highly popular, highly controversial, profit-raising program in America's increasing dominant private prison industry. Is the return of the gladiators and prisoners are competing for the ultimate prize, 
their freedom. Literally Dead Book Club, created by Kayla from Books and Lala. For this month, the choice is Out There Screaming, an anthology of new black art horrors, edited by Jordan Peele. The visionary writer and director of Get Out, Us, and No, and founder of the Monkey Paw Productions, curate this groundbreaking anthology of all new series of black horror, exploring not only the terrors of the supernatural, but the chilling realities of injustice that haunts our nation. Read your bookshop challenge. This was created by Chantel from Chantel Reads All Day. We're continuing with the Doyle route, in this case, Elementary, my dear Watson, and we have to read a book under 250 pages. For this, we picked The Finest Hours, the true story of the U.S. Coast Guard most daring sea rescue by Michael J. Tugies. This has 202 pages, so it fits pretty well. It's a biographical retelling of 1952 winter in New England. In the early hours of Monday, February 18, while the storm raged, two oil tankers the Pedalton and the Fort Mercer found themselves in the same horrifying predicament. Both tankers split in two, leaving the dozen of men on board utterly at the sea's mercy. There is a movie based on these events, and it's a fantastic idea to watch it after reading this book. Year in Aeldia, created by G from Book Roast. All the links of the announcement will be in the description box. I'm picking Turn Left. Manipulate a boulder to crash through a wall. This challenge means read a book 100 pages longer than your average. My average book in 2023 was around 314 pages, so I'm picking My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones, first book in the Indian Lake trilogy. Jay Daniels is an angry half-Indian outcast with an abusive father, an absent mother, and an entire town that wants nothing to do with her. She lives in her own world, a world in which protection comes from an unusual source, horror movies, especially the ones where a mass killer seeks revenge on a world that wronged them. When a blood actually starts to spill in the waters of Indian Lake, she pulls us into her dizzying encyclopedic mind of blood and mass murderers and predicts exactly how the plot will unfold. The Rory Gilmore's Girls Reading Challenge. We have The Age of Innocence by, by Edith Wharton, a 1920s novel. It's the perfect match. Gentleman lawyer, Newland Archer, will marry young socialite, May Welland. The marriage should be a source of pride for Newland, accustomed as he is to meeting the expectations of New York's high society. But when he falls for Merrick's exotic and enchanting cousin, Countess Ellen, Olensky, he faces an impossible choice. Should he be the dutiful husband and stay with his bride, or give in to his passions and follow the contents around the world? For the Thousand Book Challenge, I am already behind on this one. I was not able to get to the general one, so I'm going to have to add two of them for February. The first one is Desert Solitaire by Edward Abbey. This is a non-fiction through prose that is by turns passionate and poetic. Avi reflects on the condition of our remaining wilderness and the future of civilization that cannot reconcile itself to living in the natural world as well as its own internal struggle with morality. As the world continues its rapid development, Avi's cry to maintain the natural beauty of the West remains just as relevant today as when this book was written. The second one is Flatland by Edwin A. Abbott. This is going to be a reread and I hope to enjoy it a bit more. It describes the journey of a square, a mathematician and resident of the two-dimensional Flatland, where women thin, straight lines, lowliest of shapes, and where men may have any number of sides depending on their social status. On the series I want to continue, we have we only see them when they're dead, volume 2, The Stealer, and volume 3, The Soul, by Al Irwin. Fifty years have passed since Captain Malik and the crew of the Beham 2 embark on their fateful mission. And now, Jason Hauer, one of the fated crew, is drawn into a conflict that threatens to tear apart the galaxy. I hope to get through both of them, and that way I will be finishing my first series of the year. 
Next, we have Silent Parade by Keigo Higashino. This is the ninth installment in the Detective Galileo series, even though in English it's only like the fourth installment because the other books have yet to be translated, but they follow a specific case that has an opening and conclusion, therefore the books can be read out of order. With several murders, decades apart and with no solid evidence, the neighborhood in which the murdered girl lived is famous for an annual street festival, featuring a parade with entries from around Tokyo and Japan. During the parade, the suspected killer dies unexpectedly. His death is suspiciously convenient, but the people with all the best motive have rock-solid alibis. C.I. Kusanagi turns once again to his college friend physics professor and occasional police consultant Manabu Jukawa, known as Detective Galileo, to help solve the string of impossible to prove murders. And lastly, for my around the world challenge, I want to focus on a few countries. So we have Algeria. I was able to find this one in any play. A bookshop in Algiers by Kauti Adini. This is an historical fiction. In 1936, a young dreamer named Edmund Charlotte opened a modest bookshop in Algiers. Now it is to be shuttered forever. But as a young man named Ryan empties it of its books, he begins to understand that a bookshop can be much more than just a shop that sells books. A bookshop in Algiers charts the changing fortunes of Charlotte's bookshop through the political drama of Algeria's turbulent 20th century of war, a revolution and independence. It is a moving celebration of books, bookshops, and of those who dare to dream. For Angola, I found La Sociedad de los Soñadores Involuntarios por José Eduardo Agulosa. It is also available in English, The Society of Reluctant Dreamers. This is a magical realism translated from Portuguese. Daniel finds a waterproof camera belonging to Moria, a Monsavikian artist. He starts working with Moira on a machine to film and photograph people's dreams. This is just one of the many dreamlike encounters as characters appear in each other's dreams and the dreams of people around them. Sounds interesting. Liberia. The House of Sugar Beach by Helen Cooper. This is a biographical memoir. Botswana. We have Call and Response by Gotatuoni Mueng a short story collection, richly drawn stories about the lives of ordinary families in contemporary Botswana as they navigate relationships, tradition, and caretaking in a rapidly changing world. Zimbabwe, African Roar 2012, edited by Emmanuel Sigauki and Ivor W. Hartman, is the third in a series of annual anthologies dedicated to publishing short fiction by African writers. I'm really looking forward to this. Cabo Verde, El Fiel Difunto by Germano Almeida, in English is The Faithful Corpse. This tells the story of Miguel Lopez, who is killed minutes before the launch of his last book. We have people who loved and admired him during life, and finally, those who drove him to his death. Not sure what to expect, but it seems promising. And I have a few other books that I want to get to. Everyone in this room will someday be dead by Emily R. Austin. The title alone is very eye-catching. I mean, you can't find fault with that logic, so I'm sold. What is this about? Gilda, a 20-something atheist animal lover lesbian, cannot stop ruminating about death. Desperate for relief from her panicky mind and alienated from her repressive family, she responds to a flyer for free therapy at a local Catholic church and finds herself being greeted by Father Jeff, who assumes she's there for a job interview. Too embarrassed to correct him, Gilda is abruptly hired to replace the recently deceased receptionist Grace. The new releases are a maybe. Not sure if I will be able to get my hands on them. Everyone on this train is a suspect by Benjamin Stevenson. This is the second book in the Ernest Cunningham series. The book blurb makes a great pitch. When the Australian Mystery Writers Society invited me to their crime writing festival aboard the GAN, the famous train between Darwin and Adelaide, I was hoping for some inspiration for my second book, fiction this time. I needed a break from real people killing each other. Obviously, that didn't pan out. The program is a who's who of crime writing royalty. The debut writer, me. 
the forensic science writer, the blockbuster writer, the legal thriller writer, the literary writer, the psychological suspense writer. But when one of us is murdered, the remaining authors quickly turn into five detectives. Together, we should know how to solve a crime. Of course, we should also know how to commit one. How can you find a killer when all the suspects know how to get away with murder? Emily Wilde's Map of Otherlands by Heather Fawcett, the second installment in Emily Wilde's series. When mysterious fairies from other realms appear at her university, Professor Emily Wilde must uncover their secrets before it's too late, because Blamley is more than infuriatingly charming. Emily is not ready to accept his proposal of marriage. While she's preparing her research, Blamley lands her in trouble yet again when assassins sent by his mother invade Cambridge. I sense this is going to be a better ride than the first one. I am aware that February is the shortest month, even taking into account that it's leap year. So I should probably stop adding things to my TBR, but I do need to try to squeeze a few more for my other challenges. For my authors, it's only the second month of the year and I'm already behind. Let's try to fix that. John Grisham, I need to get through two of his legal thrillers. The appeal. The stakes in the novel's plot are high. The duo of lawyers at the center of the narrative are Mary and Wes Grace, who succeed in a multi-million dollar case against a criminal company who have polluted a town with dumped toxic waste. A slew of agonizing deaths have followed this. But lawyers for the chemical company appeal, and a variety of legal shenanigans are employed, and it is not clear which way the scales of justice will finally balance. The other one is the associate. Carl McAvoy is one of the greatest legal students of his generation. He has a brilliant mind and a bright future ahead of him, but he has a seeker from the past that threatens to destroy his entire livelihood. When this secret catches up with him in the form of a compromising video, Kyle is left with an impossible choice. He can take a job in New York at the largest law firm in the world and share the sordid secrets of its biggest trial, or his past will be exposed to the masses. It is a deadly game of blackmail, and someone is making him play. For rereads, I want to read the Wayward Children series by Shannon Maguire. I am a bit behind with the series, but to catch up, I want to go back and read the whole series up to now. These stories have portal magical doors. Children are led to magical lands after going through a mysterious door, but what happens when they return to the real world? This is where they end up. The first one is Every Heart a Doorway. It starts off with Nancy. She came back. The things she's experienced changed her, but she cannot adapt to her life in the suburbs among her family. So she is sent to Miss West to help her adjust. Number two, Down Among the Sticks and Bones. It follows the twin sisters, Jack and Jill, 70-year-old young women who are sent to Eleanor West's home for wayward children. And they can't help but remember the time when they were 12 and walked down the impossible staircase and discover the world filled with scientists and death and choices. Beneath the Shower Sky, the third installment. In this one, we have Rini, a girl from one of the other worlds. She lands with a literal splash in the pond behind Eleanor West's home for wayward children. The last thing she expects to find is that her mother, Sumi, died years before Rini was even conceived. But Rini can't let reality get in the way of her quest not when she has an entire role to save. In an absent dream, the fourth installment, this is a prequel and tells the story of Lundi, a very serious young girl who would rather study and dream than become a respectable housewife and live up to the expectations of the world around her, as well she should. When she finds a doorway to a world founded on logic and reason, riddles and lies, she thinks she's found her paradise. Everything costs at the goblin market, and when her time there is drawing to unclose, she makes the kind of bargain that never plays out well. There are a few short novellas, the 4.5, Jews Like Wounds, we once again get to meet Lundi and some of her companions. Remember, side quests are fun for the reader at least. Come Tumbling Down, 
the fifth installment, when Jack left Eleanor West's school for wayward children, she was carrying the body of her deliciously deranged sister, whom she had recently murdered in a fit of righteous justice. But dead in their adopted world isn't always as permanent as it is here, and when Jack is herself carried back into the school, it becomes clear that something has happened to her. Something terrible. Something of which only the maddest of scientists could conceive. Something only her friends are equipped to help her overcome. Eleanor West's no quest rule is about to be broken. Again. This is the last one I read in publication order. The next installment, Across the Green Grass and Where the Drowned Girls Go, books 6 and 7 respectively, I have not read. I need to try to get them from the library, maybe. There are also a few novellas, 7.5 in Mercy Rain and Skeleton Song, 7.7. The eighth installment, Lost in the Moment and Found, Welcome to the Shops Where the Lost Things Go. This will also be a reread. And I just noticed that I read the books out of order, which can happen, but I really want to go back and read it in order this time. After this, I will finally be able to catch up and get to the 2024 release Mislaid in Parts Half Known, in which we follow dinosaurs and portals and a girl who can find both. And this concludes my favorite TBR. It's once more overly ambitious, so I have 40 books in my TBR. Realistically, this is not going to happen. Oh wait, I also have two books from the library. The Deep Sky by Jumi Kitase, a space mystery thriller, a nominee for Best Science Fiction in the Goodreads Choice Awards 2023. An all-female crew is on board a ship leaving Earth to reach a livable planet. But halfway in the journey, a little bomb kills three of the crew and knocks the ship off course. Asuka is the only surviving witness and an immediate suspect. The other one is Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead a mystery horror. We follow Ruth Collier, who has always felt like an outsider, even as her father rains fire and brimstone from the church pulpit. But there are things the townspeople fear more than God, like the lawman, a vampiric figure said to kill sinners in their beds or on moonless nights. When a skull is found deep in the swamp, a hunt for the lawman begins. Suspicion turns to Everett, Ruth's oldest friend. As Ruth and Everett grow closer, Ruth begins to unearth the town's secrets, determined to discover the truth. And this ends up putting the TBR count at 42. Yes, I am not even going to make it reading a full book per day. I'm going to be missing 11 days. Yeah, I need to rearrange this TBR. I might as well just move the Wayward series off. That takes my TBR to 30 which is a more doable number, but I really want to get to the Wayward series. I guess I'm moving that off to March? Tough choice, I can't make up my mind. What are your plans for February? Let me know what you will be reading this month or if you have read any of the books I mentioned and feel I need to prioritize them. I clearly need to learn how to do that. Anyhow, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me and have a lovely rest of your day.